Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> this is feeling way too real with this veil on, I'm telling you right now. Are, are your eyes wet? Are your eyes wet? Or is it just me? So welcome back to another episode of my wedding series. Today is one of the big boys. We're doing the wedding makeup tutorial. I wanted to do something that was kind of in between full glam and soft glam, between matte and shimmer, and just something that would be really crowd pleasing. So that's what we have today. Everything is very long wearing. Everything looks amazing in photographs, but also amazing in person. And yeah, I'm sharing skin prep, foundation, creams, powders, eyes, all of that stuff. So if you are gonna be doing your makeup for your own wedding, or even if you're a bridesmaid, hopefully this video is super helpful for you guys. It's going to be very long. Sorry in advance, but let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna cut right to the chase and we are going to get started. I am gonna be starting off with skin prep. I've been watching a lot of makeup artists recently and they all really enforce skin prep being very crucial to making your makeup look the best and wear the best throughout the day. So first I'm gonna be going in with these Sephora Glow Peel Pads. First Aid Beauty has similar ones or if you don't want something that's like on a like a little disposable, you can just use whatever like toner you have and put it on a cotton pad, do that. So this is really going to get rid of any like dead skin sitting on the surface. Sometimes you like have makeup that wants to like cling to a certain area and this kind of just like prevents that from happening. So then I'm gonna go in with moisturizer. My skin has been a little bit more oily recently. I don't know if it's because it's summer or just like hormonal stuff or whatever, but my skin has been a little bit more oily. So I am gonna be using an oil-free cream. This is from Summer Fridays. This is the Cloud Dew Oil-Free Gel Cream. I really love this on her makeup. It's a very lightweight consistency. It's super hydrating. It's not greasy and I just love it. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Tatcha Water Cream is another good one. Or if you're looking for like a drugstore option, the Neutrogena like gel cream fragrance free one is really good also. And you definitely wanna apply moisturizer like all the way from the neck down as well. But before the video, I actually went ahead and applied some body makeup. This is the body sauce from Fenty Beauty in the shade Agave Spice. I really love this. It gives coverage, it adds a little bit of luminosity as well, and it dries down. Like there's no tacky finish whatsoever. So I would totally recommend this for body makeup. It's amazing. Then I'm gonna go in with some eye cream. This is the Alpha H Liquid Gold Eye Cream. I love this stuff. If you have milia prone under eyes, this is like a game changer. It like gets rid of milia, it prevents it, and it just makes your skin look so good. And it supposedly has peptides that are supposed to be like preventing you from like making expression lines. I don't know if that's like legit, but I really love this. So I'm gonna let that soak in for a second. Then you wanna apply some lip balm. This is the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm, the vanilla one. I love this and I love that they repackage it into a more like travel friendly tube. I hated the other tube, it was so messy. Now I'm gonna go in and do my eyes. I know a lot of people do brows first. I just have come to terms with the fact that I hate doing my brows first because I always have to redo them later on because I'm pretty messy. And to be honest, I like a little bit of foundation or concealer or whatever underneath my brows because it A, makes them last longer for me, and B, like the skin underneath your brows, like you don't want it to be a different color than like the rest of your face. So I pretty much always do my brows last. And I know that's like unpopular opinion, but I don't really care. <laughs> so next I'm gonna go in with a concealer to prime my eyes. If you have oily lids, use an eye primer. I don't have any issues with like oily lids or anything like that, but if you do, you probably shouldn't use a concealer or if you do, you wanna use one that is not very hydrating. A lot of concealers claim to be hydrating because you don't want your under eyes looking crepey. So if you have oily lids, don't use a concealer, use a actual eye primer. But for me, this works just fine and I just put way too much on. So use whatever concealer that you plan on using later on but you really wanna make sure to apply this all over the lid, the inner corner, 
and bring it out. Bring it out this way because a lot of times we'll be winging our shadow out and if you don't have your eye base all the way out there, it's not going to go on as smooth. It's going to get a little patchy in the outer parts. So I pretty much do eye primer or like concealer all the way across. So in between here, inner corner, up to the brow bone, and basically way out here. Then I'm just setting that with a face powder. I'm using the CoverGirl Clean Fresh powder in the shade Light. This is going to set everything, and it's also going to add a little bit of color and like even tone to the eye because it is like a face powder. It's going to add a little bit of coverage and set at the same time. So for my eyeshadow palette today, I'm going to be going in with the Patrick Ta Major Dimension eyeshadow palette. I love the tones in this palette. I love the formulas. Everything is so buttery and creamy and smooth and I just love it. So first up, I'm going to go in with this shade over here. It's just a very nice light nude shade and I am just going to start by bringing this in the crease. And for me, I like to take my crease color a little bit higher than my natural crease. For me, it helps just to kind of lift the eyes. So I go a little bit higher, almost up to the brow bone. And before we get into the eye look, I just want to say that this eye look is going to be very basic and I know this may not be like a popular thing, but I think that bridal makeup, especially the eyes, like you don't want to do anything crazy. And even if you want to do something crazy, I feel like at the end of the day, what's really going to transform your eye and make it look glam and make it look special, it's going to be the eyelashes. So. For me, oftentimes when I put on eyelashes, you don't even see the eyeshadow that's going on. So I feel like especially if you're not that talented in the eyeshadow department, don't worry about it too much. It's the second you put on a false lash, that's what's going to make your eye go from A to Z. Like, you know, not the 45 eyeshadows that you have on. So next I'm going in with this shade here. It's just a nice like warm caramel type of shade. And this we're just going to bring to the outer corner of the crease and just kind of drag it out. I like my eye shape to be a little bit elongated so I bring it out and kind of follow the tail of the brow. And I feel like I lost my train of thought but yeah I was just saying that for your eyeshadow look, just go a little bit extra than what you would normally do. You don't want to look like a different person on your wedding day. That is really like the worst thing you can do. You don't want to feel not like yourself. So if you're someone who doesn't wear a ton of makeup, just do the basic. If you're someone who wears a decent amount of makeup, add a little bit extra. Go a little bit darker. But I don't think you have to do anything crazy at the end of the day. Okay? So that color, we brought it out here. So we're going past where our natural eye is and kind of extending it. And I'm also bringing just whatever's left on the brush, I'm dragging it in, just in following my natural eye socket. And I'm almost bringing it into my nose contour. So right into like where the socket meets like the bridge of the nose. Next, what I'm going to do is I am going to take a mixture of these two shades here, the darkest one and then like the reddish brown, and I'm just going to start pressing this in the outer corner. I'm kind of bringing it in a upward motion. I'm just kind of like tapping it because I really want to deposit that color. So then I'm going to go back in with that caramel shade and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the reddish brown shade. So as we're blending, you're going to get the blending color, but then also a little bit of depth. So I'm just going to go and kind of 
just go over that same like shape but just lightly blending and what's always the hardest for me is that my eyes are not the same shape and most people's aren't either so it's very hard to kind of like get them to look the exact same because your eyes are not the exact same. I mean, mine aren't anyway, so it's a struggle, but we make it work. I'm going to go in with the lightest shade in the palette, which is kind of like a matte with flecks of shimmer. So it's not a shimmery shade and that's why I love it. I've kind of found that I really don't enjoy like frosty shades that have just full on shimmer. I feel like it can accentuate the texture of your lids. And I mean, it's not that I have like really crepey eyelids or anything, but I just don't really like how it like lays on my eye. So this shade right up here, I love it because it's like a matte shade. Like if you can see it, it's like a matte shade, but it has flecks of shimmer in it. And I feel like that's really beautiful. It adds color, but it also adds a little bit of shimmer. So I'm just going to take a flat like shader type brush and I'm just going to pat that on. And so it's going to add a little bit of lightness and brightness, but it's also going to add just like a touch of shimmer. And I feel like this is really pretty. It photographs beautifully. It doesn't look overly shimmery. So I'm just concentrating that on like the inner third or so. And also kind of like bringing it up a little bit higher. Almost up to the crease to create like a fake little cut there. That's really going to open your eyes. I will say that if you have very narrow eyes, you really don't want to do that because it's going to make them come together even more. So if your eyes are very narrow set, you really don't want to do that. You want to leave the brightest point at your actual tear duct. You don't want to, you don't want to bring it in too far because that's going to make your eyes look even closer together. So just a little tip there. So then I'm going to go back in with my blending brush. I'm going to take this shade and this shade and I'm just going to lightly blend right above where we put that because I don't want it too high so then I'm going to take a very flat narrow stiff brush and I'm going to go in with the darkest shade of the palette and I'm really going to press that right into the lash line this is almost going to give it like a liner effect. So if you can see, it's very nice and dark at the base. And this is going to provide a nice little background for when we put our liner down sorry my camera cut out a little bit when i was doing that but i took a little bit of this deep dark shade here it's like a dark brown with gold glitter i tap it off on my hand first because you don't want to go straight in because it's a lot and then i just tapped it on over like the center of the lid just to add a little pop of shimmer and glitter so then i'm going to take a black liner this is the nyx lift and snatch which is actually an eyebrow pen but in the shade black and I'm just gonna do this on the lash line, like the very, very lash line. I want it very thin. I'm going all the way in, all the way out. And I love using this because it's meant to be a brow pen, so the tip is very, very fine and precise. And I love it, so. I know a lot of people do gel liner, but I suck at gel liner on a brush, so. So then I'm going to attempt to do a very small wing with this.
then what you can do is just go back in with that flat shader brush you used before and kind of just diffuse it out a little bit. I don't really love a very stark wing. I feel like it just looks a little bit harsh and it's just a little bit too extreme for me. So I like this method and it just makes the whole process a little bit more forgiving. If you like a very precise, dark, deep line, don't go over it, but I feel like it's a little just more flattering. So then I'm gonna go back in with my face powder that I use to set the eye. You can use any light colored shadow, any white colored shadow, but I'm just gonna use this because it's my, it's like a lighter version of my skin tone and I feel like it just makes it very cohesive and it's not too white. So if whatever eyeshadow palette you have doesn't have a brow bone color like you like, just use a light face powder. So then before I go in with mascara or false lashes, I'm going to apply some eyeliner to the upper waterline. And I'm just using a really dark brown shade. This is the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist in the shade Ebony. And this is just going to kind of really deepen up the lash line. I'm just going to do a little bit of liner in the outer corner. This is just going to kind of like reinforce that wing shape. I don't like to bring it in all the way in though. I feel like if I bring it all the way in, it makes my eyes look very small and closed off. But if you have big eyes and you want to make them look smaller, then by all means do the whole rim. Then I'm going to apply false lashes. I'm using these ones from Amazon. I love them. They're so light and fluffy. They're wispy. They're longer on the outer edges. So that, again, reinforces that wing shape. So I really love these. They're very lightweight. They feel like nothing. And they come in a pack of three. And they're pretty affordable. So I'm going to go ahead and apply these. So lashes are on. Then I'm going to apply some mascara. I'm using Benefit's Roller Lash. I believe this is like water resistant. I would definitely recommend using waterproof or something like that if you are a crier, but I'm not going to use waterproof today just because I don't need it to be. I'm literally going to take this off when I'm done, so don't need that really. And I'm really just concentrating this at like the base where my natural lashes are so that it blends. I'm just going to go in with a makeup wipe and lightly... Just kind of get away any like fallout bits and pieces. If your under eyes are very, very dry, I would suggest going in with like a little tiny bit more after you wipe away or just waiting until this step to apply your eye cream. But personally, I don't really have too much of a problem. So then I'm gonna go in with a primer and I'm just gonna be applying this to the areas that I need like blurring and pore control. This is the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer Blurring Primer. It's silicone free. I've kind of found that silicone based primers make me feel oily throughout the day. So this product, you really don't need a lot and you only want to put it where you would need like oil control or pores because it like, it's hard to describe. It like has like a very weird texture. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Like as you're putting it into your skin, like it almost feels like a like a glue almost. I don't know how to describe it, but I would not put this all over my face because I don't think it would really turn out well. Oh, I just shoved my finger on my nose and oh, eh, that wasn't good. Whew. Well, if my sinuses were clogged, now they're, now they're not. Then for my foundation, I'm going to go in with the new Lawless Conceal the Deal foundation. This is so freaking good. It is lightweight. It's long wearing. It is not drying. It's not cakey. It just looks amazing on the skin. It wears really nicely. So I am going to put a little bit of this on the back of my hand. It is kind of like a liquidy, runny consistency. And you can definitely build it up, but the coverage is really, really nice. So I am just going to take a brush. And I think I just put a fuzz on my face, which is going to drive me insane. But I'm just going to take a brush and we are just going to start working this in. 
And the only thing about this foundation is I feel like maybe I need a different color. I'm not really sure, but I do make it work. So this foundation, you really just wanna like press, press, press. I'm using the It Cosmetics foundation brush. And we are just pressing this in everywhere. I'm using the shade Sandalwood. I'm not sure if I said that. I feel like this looks so much better in person than it does on camera, but whatever. Um, if it's your wedding day, definitely make sure to get your ears, your neck, your back of your neck, basically anywhere that you can actually see, you wanna do that. So then for my concealer, I'm going to go in with the Magic Touch Concealer from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is in the shade 6. And I like this color because it's kind of like a very neutral color. It's not like too peach, too pink, too anything. And I'm really just concentrating it right here. I have found that I really do not enjoy concealer way out here the way that my face is shaped if I bring the concealer way out it makes my face look even wider in this area and this is like where my face is wide already so I really just don't do that anymore because it looks stupid <laughs> um I'm doing around the mouth because I don't like when my mouth area looks very dark again like where I place things is just my preference and how I oops and how I like my makeup to look. And we're gonna do down the nose. I really like the tip of this because it's pointed and you can get like pretty precise with that. So this product does spread quite a bit. So first I'm gonna go in with a brush and kind of blend it where I want it to. I feel like you have more control with a brush than you do with a sponge and a sponge you lose some of the coverage right away because the the sponge is going to soak up product so i'm going to go in with this first and i like to kind of just like lift the corners of the mouth with that and then above the lip In between the brow center of the forehead and it's not so much that I'm doing a ton of concealing but I'm adding some like dimension so I'm gonna take this and again just spread it where I want it to go so there will be like a little bit right underneath the eyes but it's not a full-on like I don't know triangle or whatever So I'm going to take my beauty blender and really press that in. And my beauty blender is barely damp. Like I, when I touch it, I don't want it to feel wet. I don't like a really wet beauty blender because it's just, it's not going to do a whole lot for you if it's too wet. So then I'm going to do a little bit of sculpting to the face. I'm going to use the Makeup by Mario Sculpting Stick in shade medium dark or medium deep. But it's the medium something. And I don't typically like to draw on the face with a product. But this formula, you're able to. I don't know what it is about it. But it just blends really nicely. So this is going to give me some warmth and sculpting at the same time. And kind of just want to put this product a little bit higher than you actually want the sculpting because when you blend it out, it's going to like drop a little bit. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take, I probably should take this on a brush. Yeah, I'm going to take this on a brush and do my nose. We can be more precise. I'm 
we're gonna cut the tip just the tip and then I'm gonna take that brush and do basically like a lip contour this just gives your lip a little bit of shadow and makes it look more full and for me my lip is not symmetrical especially on this side so I like like to go a little bit more on this side so it looks like a little bit fuller I don't know if it actually does that but in my mind it helps then I'm just gonna blend that out with the same brush that I used for foundation but before I do so I like to spray my brush with a little setting spray first just to get a little hydration going and then we start blending and you don't want to do too much swiping you want to do a lot of pressing because you don't want it to go all over the universe Really want to drag it into the hairline. But if you see that product, it's not too creamy. It almost has like a powdery finish. So I feel like that's why it does well when you're just putting it over top because it's not like sliding around and like getting too wet and sloppy it pretty much stays where you put it which i feel like is why i love it so much i almost forgot we're gonna do our jaw which i like to just draw right on the jaw but don't forget to blend this part out because the other day i did this and i literally forgot to blend it i was like blending it with my finger in the car because i like had my selfie camera on and then I was like oh my god there's literally a straight line on my jaw <laughs> so just make sure you don't forget and put it right underneath your double chin even if you don't think you have one it's gonna help and kind of bring it up For the nose, I'm actually just going to take my finger and blend that. Okay, so I'm going to blend the brown part, or the bronzer part I should say, with my finger. Because sometimes your finger, you can just get in there a little bit better. And then I'm going to take my sponge and just dab a roux over top. Then I'm going to go in with the Hourglass Cream Blush Stick. This is in the shade Devoted. It's a really nice neutral pink. It's not too bright or loud or too coral or too pink. It's just kind of like a very neutral pink, which I love. And then I'm going to pack it on the skin. And this has a very similar kind of texture to the Makeup by Mario contour sticks. I don't love the Makeup by Mario Cream Blush. It's just because they have more of a dewy finish. And I kind of prefer this finish for my cream blush because I feel like it stays better and layers a little bit better under powders and things like that. Um, so yeah, I'm going over top and keeping this kind of in the outer area and really just like marrying it with the bronzer. And so because this is more of like a neutral undertone, it's not going to clash with the bronzer like it's not too warm or too cool that it's gonna like look crazy and like not blend well and you don't have to do cream products underneath but it just really enhances the longevity of all of your makeup because when things start to fade away you have like a backup layer you know then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray my face with setting spray. This is the It Cosmetics. 
Then I take the butt of the sponge and there isn't really any product on the back of my hand. It's mostly dried down, but as you'll see, like a little bit is showing up on there. Then I'm just going to go over my whole face with that. And this is going to kind of help really press everything into the skin, but also blend it and pick up any extra product that is sitting on the skin. So next I'm going to set my face. I'm going to going in with the Chantecaille Loose Powder. I love this powder. Um, the packaging sucks ass. Like there's so much product like literally everywhere. But I love, love, love this powder. So I'm going to take my little powder puff. I got these on Amazon. And I'm just going to go in and get a lot of powder on my puff. And I'm just going to be setting. So make sure you don't have any creases under the eyes because you will be setting them when you set them. Okay, and then we are just gonna start pressing this in. And this is pretty translucent. It's not gonna add like much color. It's really just gonna set your face and blur everything, mattify, make everything look amazing. And I really just love it. It looks so, so good on the skin. And this is going to be the first of several powders that we're using. So that would be step one. Then I'm just going to go in with a tiny bit more. And and I'm going to just kind of like bake the sides of the nose with this to kind of like reinforce that contour. It doesn't have a ton of coverage or color, so it's not going to do a whole lot for like brightening, but it's just going to kind of clean up any areas. I'm just going to do a little bit under here to kind of clean up any areas that I need cleaned up. Then I'm gonna go in and contour my nose a little bit. And for any contouring, I love the Dior Contour Palette. This color right here is my favorite shade for contouring. So I'm just gonna take a little bit on a brush and pretty much go in between the lines that I have that I'm baking with. Just running my brush right there at the tip. Then I just take the excess powder and really just like press it in and like help it blend the nose contour a little bit. I'm not very good at nose contouring so I'm sorry, but that's about the best I can do. So then I'm going to go in with some bronzer. And for that, I'm going to use my CoverGirl Clean Fresh Bronzer in the shade Rich. I love the color of this, the undertone of this. Everything is just so good. And it looks really nice on the skin. It adds like the perfect amount of color. And we're just going to add like a teeny tiny bit out here. And again, you really just want to kind of like dab it and press it instead of swirling like a mad person. I am usually a mad person, like going ham and crazy, but... You can't really do that for your wedding. So then I'm going to go in with blush. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Climax blush. I love it. It has 
kind of like a neutral like bronzy undertone and then the center has some shimmer so I love to apply this on the outer parts of my face I don't love shimmer on my inner cheek because then I feel like it accentuates pores and it just doesn't really look all of that cute so I just take my brush swirl it in there tap it off and then we are going to apply it out here And it's just going to add like a teeny tiny bit of shimmer, like nothing insane, but I love these blushes. They don't accentuate your texture and they just blend so nicely. So I'm going to take that right there. Again, I like to put some blush like literally all over the place. And then for me, I love like a cool tone pinky blush like under the eyes. I feel like it looks like super youthful. So I'm gonna go in with Laura Mercier Strawberry. This is a very like blue toned pink and I don't like this out here like that looks insane but right here like where I don't have like bronzer and stuff I think it looks really pretty. And if you have like the Dior blush that everyone talks about this is kind of like that but I feel like it's better. So this I'm just gonna go right here. And just like swirl it back and I don't know something about that really pretty pinky shade just seems very bridal to me I know not everyone is into like a really heavy blush look but then we're gonna go back to this Dior palette I'm gonna take the champagne shade and I'm gonna use that to highlight my nose I'm gonna pop a little bit on the tip and for the tip I go this way and keep the line pretty thin and then I do blend it out don't worry so I go like that and then kind of just run it down then we're going to go back to our eyeshadow. So I'm going to take that same flat shader brush. <gasps> I dropped this and it freaking broke. Okay. So then we're going to go back in with that dark brown shade. And we're going to put this really as tight to the lower lash line as we can. So like underneath your eyelashes, if that makes sense. Like go up and underneath and get right on that lash line. And you kind of want to connect it to that wing we did earlier, which seems like that was like 4,000 years ago, right? And then I'm just going to grab a mixture of these two nude shades. And I'm just going to blend that underneath the lash line. So I don't want the whole lash line to be super smoked out, just like the outer part. So that's why I only took that dark shade on like the outer section. So I know you all think I'm probably crazy at this point, but now I'm gonna go in with another powder. This is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Powder. And I am going to swirl my brush in this and then just buff my face. And this is just going to kind of help everything mesh. I don't like harsh lines. I don't like seeing like cuts and things like that. So that's why I do this step. If you want to see like blush, bronzer, like cut, like you don't have to do this, but I don't like to see that. So I take this, I even take it underneath my eyes. And it just makes everything look very cohesive it tones down any highlight or like anything like that and it just makes your face look airbrushed and this i learned a long time ago from wayne goss he's just awesome so now i'm gonna go off camera i'm gonna do my eyebrows i have a full eyebrow tutorial that's very in-depth if you need help with brows definitely check that out i still use the same products and yeah, so I'm gonna do that really quick and then I'll be right back. Okay, so my brows are done. They're a little bit more arched than I typically like just because I have my Botox done like 
last week and they're just a little bit extreme right now, but that's okay. Um, I also added a little bit of mascara just to the outside corners. I don't like to pull it in too much because I feel like it kind of drags the eye down. So now I'm going to do my lips. I'm going to go in and line and also fill in with the Buxom Powerline Lip Liner with the shade Hush Hush Henna. This is a really nice like nudie pink shade, so it's not too brown. Sometimes brown photographs a little bit 90s, so I like this. This has a little bit of a pink undertone to it. And the pencil of this is like a bigger like angled pencil, which is nice because if you're filling in with your lips, which I would highly recommend when you are doing a special occasion or pretty much any time, because when you fill in the whole line, or when you fill in the whole lip, then when the other parts of the lip fade away, you still have something in the background. So, and then, okay, we're back. Sorry, my light just turned off. I'm using Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury. But pretty much any like medium nude shade with that liner will pull a little bit more pinky and I feel like that pink color is really pretty for bridal. And then if you want to add a gloss, I really love this one from Buxom. It's the Full On Plumping Lip Polish in White Russian Sparkle. And I'm just going to put this in the center. I probably wouldn't do a gloss for like walking down the aisle because it's gonna be like windy, you're gonna have your veil, you're gonna be kissing someone, but for like reception, I feel like a gloss is really pretty. So then I have one more powder that I wanna apply. I know you guys are probably like this bitch. She's applying so many freaking powders. Is she ever gonna be done with the powders, okay? This is the last powder for the face, I swear. This is the new Milani Make It Last Setting Powder. This is so good at setting your makeup, blurring your pores, it's super good. So I'm going to go in with the other side of my little powder puff and I'm going to press it into like my T-zone area. Press it anywhere that I do not want any shine coming through. So mainly my T-zone area where I know I will get shiny. This really just helps it somehow. I don't really know how or why, but it does. And... It blurs your face, it makes it look so good. So anywhere that you want a little extra blurring and mattifying, put it there. So I like this area to all be like Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I like all of that to be nice and matte. Then we're almost done. I'm gonna apply the Holy Grail of setting sprays. I just love the Urban Decay All Nighter. I tried the Charlotte Tilbury one. It made my face not feel like melted in. I feel like this is just the best one for making it last all day, making everything melt together. So I'm gonna spray generously with this. I just feel like it's the goat. And so while I have that on, I am gonna go back in with a mixture of these two powders from the Dior palette and I'm gonna highlight my inner corner. So anywhere that you want the highlight to be like super like intense, do it now. So I'm gonna go right in to that inner corner and really brighten it up. It'll also make it last a lot longer too. And then I'm gonna go in with my fan. We're gonna dry it down. And I will be back. Spoiler alert, I took off the gloss because it was getting in the way of my veil <laughs> or my blush or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, this is the final look. It's going to be long wearing. It's going to look amazing in photos. It's going to look amazing in person. It's not going to feel too heavy and it's going to last all day. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Congratulations to all my brides out there. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Also, please don't talk shit about this eyebrow or that eyebrow. I had my Botox done and I was like, can you do a little bit of a lift on the brow? And we got a lot of lift. We didn't get a little lift. We got a lot of lift. We have freaking bench press of a lift going on and I'm not really okay with it. So hopefully we can tone it down when I see her next week. But that is just like a little PSA. Don't play around with your Botox right before your wedding. Give it a little extra time, okay? So you can experiment and figure out what you like and what you don't like, okay? Because you don't want to be looking crazy.
even though you are crazy. We're all crazy, us women. We're crazy. And the husbands, they already either know and they're accepting it or they're about to find out that we're batshit crazy.